These are the two pulleys that the mechanical fan pulley belt went around. They are big, they are heavy, really heavy. Um, very over-engineered, I'd say. Good bearings in them still, but they're not required, and that will save a bit of weight. Here's the original water pump, which, although the bearings are absolutely fine in it, the impeller has had better days, so it's uh, probably just as well that I replaced that with a new one. I've painted the air conditioning radiator, the coolant uh, heat exchanger, and just general parts and areas around the engine that uh, I could access that were rusty, um, mountings like this, anything that uh, I could clean, including all the front of the engine, which I used just gallons of degreaser brake cleaner on. Uh, uh, I've done, I've even painted this pulley, anything that was just looking a bit tatty, uh, just to make uh, things look a little bit more clean and also to protect from further rust. The new alternator is in since the last video. There it is. It's a JCB item, as in a JCB digger. I couldn't find an uprated version for a Jag V12, even though Kirby Palm in his book had recommended multiple suppliers and models. That was the equivalent that I could find that would actually fit. It's 120 amp output, which meant I had to uprate lots of the cables as well. And this whole new positive lead with a fusible link in it. So that's all installed and uh, I've tested the continuity, that works. New belt and we'll see if the alternator actually works and gives the output I need. It's an improvement over the original, not only in the output of amperage but also in the working speed. I think that one from the specs I saw some time ago, which I've lost, spins up to 18,000 RPM, whereas the original unit is only a 15,000 RPM limit. That pulley size is the same as the original, so if I need to put a smaller pulley on to get a faster spin, the uh, alternator should cope with it, and that would uh, hopefully give me more output at idle speeds, if the fans are on, let's say, and the lights are on air conditioning running, that kind of thing. So a new water pump. The old water pump was okay, but since I was at this sort of point of uh, dismantling components, I had access to the water pump, so I changed that. There's a stud here which the power steering adjustment goes on to. It was a stupid, stupid mistake. It's the one component I've broken. I was messing around with it. I didn't actually have to take the nut off that I was trying to remove from it, which actually is a captive nut anyway, so it's a stupid, stupid thing to do, and they're a nightmare to source, so don't break that, don't lose that, uh, that one uh, very long stud that goes through the water pump and through the uh, power steering adjustment uh, mounting. In the end, I went against using the aluminium radiator. It just was going to be too much work to try to modify it to replicate the original. This is the original radiator. It's been reconditioned. Uh, the electric fans have been mounted onto the radiator. Unfortunately, the guy who did the work, he did a great job of renovating the original. He recorded it, uh, but he put the fans on upside down. So these, this is uh, the correct way. That's up in the car. The flaps here open that way. And he also, put on some bolts onto the top. These stick out too proud and I can't get the panel that sits on the top. It won't fit on so I'm going to have to modify those, replace them with countersunk bolts. I'm using this pipe insulation which I got from a local hardware store. That's going to go in at the sides of the radiator, the base and also at the top. I've got a couple of different sizes and that, that should squish down and also be heat resistant. This is the pipe insulation here, jammed in on one side of the radiator. That's the end of the radiator there. And this pipe insulation jams in quite nicely. I don't think that's gonna dislodge, but it should stop air from bypassing the radiator and going through the path of least resistance, which would mean the air will go through here, which is the air conditioning radiator, which is not yet in place. That will sit further back against here, this foam of the uh, original radiator that's been refurbished. 
The replacement crossflow pipe, the EAC4191 component, has arrived from Simply Performance in the UK. It's, uh, it's not going to win any beauty contests. Um, this is on, I don't know if you can see that top is on a bit wonky. And the welds are not beautiful, but then I don't really know what the integrity of them is like, um, but it looks to be the right sort of dimensions, so I'll give that a go for fitting it. And that was 200 pounds. When you're fitting the coolant hoses back onto the Jaguar V12 engine, at some point you will want to take your own life. Uh, you'll have at least three too few elbows per arm to get to all the different difficult spots. Uh, I'm trying a different technique with this cross flow pipe, which is to put the rubber hose sections, actually push them right up onto the uh, pipes. I'm leaving the uh, one from the water pump down there in situ. I'm gonna put this one on first, which is the water pump hose, which then should give me the ability to pivot around all the awkward spots and catch points uh, that are on the engine. And then I can slide the rubber hoses onto the spigots on the engine. Uh, I haven't tried this yet. I can't film whilst I do it. Uh, I will give it a go and let you know how I get on. Oh, and also don't forget to put the clips on in the right orientation as well. Can I try them out to see which is the best way to get to the, uh, the actual bolt heads to tighten them up. They're all kind of in position now the right orientation they're not all facing the same way as well so uh, try out before you commit yourself well it's halfway in I've got this in and I've got this side lined up and if I go around this side it's difficult to see in amongst all the jumble that's half the problem but down in here is lined up so now it's ready for me to push those hose sections into place uh, I would say this is much easier than putting the hose sections onto the engine first and then trying to fit this, which was a difficulty level of, frankly, impossible. And I think I've just downgraded the difficulty level too. I'm gonna to need to have a lie down afterwards, but let's just see if I can finish this job uh, the way I'm going. Okay, uh, I just had to wrestle with these a bit. I didn't mention before that I've actually lubricated them up with quite a lot of Vaseline smeared around the inside of the rubber hoses. I'm still trying to push this on. And uh, yeah, they're all in position now. That was a lot easier than the alternative. Uh, I wish I would discovered that years ago when I put the original cross flow pipe uh, into position after a service of the cooling system where I invented a whole new language of swear words. Um, I think this is gonna be all right. Still assessing this cross flow pipe for uh, fit it actually does fit it's a bit closer here you can see how close it is here to the engine I think than normal but that should mean it clears the belt which runs the water pump belt that anyway that new method was a winner so I would strongly recommend it now I just got to get the clips in place tighten them down and then go and have that lie down so this jumble of wires is the Davis Craig controller for the uh, the two fans. I'll just show you the two fans in situ. A bit dusty now. These are the upside down fans as installed by the restorer of the radiator. Anyway, the only advantage of having the fans in upside down is these connectors are at the top. Easier for me to access when I was wiring this in. So the mess, the spaghetti here is actually fairly straightforward when you break it down. This uh, is a main power feed to the controller and to the fans. It then sends 12 volts through each of these fused wires to each of the fans. I've actually rigged up, see if I can find one of the connectors. There we go. That's the connector. Two of those, one to each fan. And I've made this the primary fan because there's a bigger gap between the fan and the front of the engine for airflow. So this is the one that comes on first when instructed by this wire, which is part of the circuit 
for the air conditioning. When the compressor comes on, the signal would come to here, which would go to a relay, an original relay, and that would turn on the original fan that was here, that is now gone. So that now still sends a signal when the air conditioning gets switched on, it sends a signal to this, which tells the new controller that we need to put on fan one.